Greetings, all. Staff Sergeant Orr here to bring you a class on conducting preventive maintenance checks and services. Now, this is uh, going to be kind of an in-depth class, but you shouldn't get too lost because I'm going to break this down as best as possible so you, the soldier, can go out and conduct your PMCS and be ready for the fight. All right. Always remember, you got to do your PMCS because you don't know what the last guy did. All right, so what we're going to do is go back into the TLO. All right, our task, we're going to conduct PMCS on assigned equipment. It's going to be your Humvees, your FMTVs, your generators. Conditions in a field or motor pool environment given assigned equipment with the respective technical references, ULLs Form 5988 ECHO or DA Form 2404 with DA Form 2408-14 tools and personnel. And without assistance, students must... Select the appropriate technical publications and references. Use the correct sections in the references that relate to the required PMCS. Perform the proper PMCS accordance with procedures and specifications in the appropriate technical publications. Identify all faults. Complete all documentation in accordance with DAPAM 75035 and DAPAM 738-50. Employ accident prevention measures and risk management process. Comply with all host nation, federal, state, and local environmental laws and regulations. So getting right into it. Preventive Maintenance Checks and Services, PMCS. It is basically the care and service inspection and detection of future issues or issues currently with your vehicle. So you can knock those faults out or annotate those faults, get them to the, uh, the mechanic so they can go ahead and fix it. All right. If you don't do this as the operator, you run the risk of rolling around in broken equipment or injuring yourself, other people, or the military's equipment. All right. Now, the procedure in the category of maintenance support PMCS are found in the Dash 10 and Dash 20 equipment technical manuals and lubrication orders. You guys probably aren't going to be messing too much with the Dash 20s because you'd have to do the Dash 20 inspections with a mechanic. So what we're going to focus on mostly is the Dash 10. And I'm going to break that down a little further as we get on. Okay, the 1020 standard. Uh, the 1020 standard is the equipment when it's fully mission capable. All right, it means that all faults are identified using the items to check column of the applicable uh, applicable TM10 series and 20 series PMCS table. Uh, the corrective actions authorized to be accomplished at unit level and for which required parts are available are completed, and required parts are requisitioned for faults that require them to complete. Uh, the corrective actions. All right, this is what gets you to that 1020 FMC standard. To continue on, corrective actions that are authorized to be accomplished at a maintenance level above the unit are on a valid direct support maintenance request. Equipment services are performed within the scheduled service interval, and all current urgent and limited urgent modification work orders, or MWOs, are applied. All authorized basic issue items, BII, and components of the end item, COEI, are present and serviceable or on a valid requisition, which means if you don't have it, you need to have it in your vehicle, okay? For fully mission capable, for to be fully mission capable, uh, the systems and equipment that are safe and have all mission essential subsystems installed and operating as designed by the applicable army regulation meaning you have to have all your stuff in the vehicle everything has to be working everything can't be faulty so whatever you're assigned in that vehicle whether it's the BII the vehicle itself everything has to function all the way up to the fire extinguishers okay all right continuing on the enabling learning objective alpha the task is select and use the appropriate references to perform PMCS on assigned equipment the conditions in a shop field environment, given a selection of references for different types of equipment, we're going to, or I'm sorry, the standard is the student will select the correct reference and use the correct PMCS table for the assigned equipment during the performance exam. So you will have a hands-on exam. You are going to go out and PMCS your vehicles accordingly, and we're going to do a big rotation. So there's going to be a Humvee, FMTV, and maybe a generator out there. Okay, so you guys can go around and get hands-on. All right, so... Let's go ahead and get into the basic sections of the operations or of the operator's manual. We're going to go over uh, these six items. Okay, it's very important that we go over these six items in order. That way, you won't be 
completely lost when it's time to get out there and put hands on on these vehicles. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to reference the uh, M1151 Alpha or 1151A1 uh, table of contents in the dash 10 for for your uh, equipment. And here it is. Now, this is going to be the table of contents that you're going to be looking at, and whether it's in the manual or a PDF file, it's going to look pretty much the same. The only difference about the PDF file is, is digital. So when you get in there and you look at chapter 3 and chapter 4, sometimes they'll have little red uh, boxes around it. When you click on it, it'll take you directly to the area that you're supposed to be. I've seen people have this stuff on their smartphones and on tablets and maybe even on computers to help them out with their PMCS. And I know that I've sent this out to uh, the command teams as well, so they can go ahead and reference this material. So whether you choose to do the manual or the PDF, it doesn't really matter as long as you have that manual with you, okay? So going uh, into the manual, after you get into your uh, preventive maintenance checks and services, you're going to see the operator maintenance uh, area, all right? And it's going to have a couple things that's really important to address here. You got the warnings and the cautions. Now the warnings, they're to make sure that you don't you know, mess up the environment or you don't hurt yourself or somebody else. The cautions are saying, hey, you know what, you need to do this because if you don't do this, then you could have damage to the equipment. All right. Warnings and cautions are somewhat similar. They just want to make sure that you're not doing damage to yourself, to somebody else, or the military equipment. After this, you're going to get into the procedures. Once you get into the procedures, it's going to tell you uh, troubleshooting. It's going to tell you what forms to look at, what tools you might need for your uh, PMCS. And it's also going to tell you that you need to refer to the appropriate TM for whatever you're doing. So if it's just a regular PMCS at an operator level, then you're just going to stick with the operator level. If it should tell you that, hey, you're going to have to go a little more in depth, you can get a mechanic to verify the fault. They can get the Dash 20 out and you can both go through that together. All right. So moving on, what we're going to do now is we're going to look at the actual PMCS table. So... Everybody, I'm sure, has seen this before, all right, but we're going to go through it by the number, so stick with me. Now, the PMCS table, this is an example of the very first page you're going to see. The PMCS table has a, has a bunch of different things they're going to go over. It's going to be the item number interval, item V checker services, procedure and equipment, and so on and so forth, all right? These are very, very important, and uh, we're going to get, into, uh, get more in-depth it, into it as we go on, okay? Uh, later on, uh, you or, or after the PMCS, if you wanted to check on your BII to make sure that your FMC, they also have a BII section, and this is where you can find all of your BII for your vehicle. Now, the PDF is probably going to have a more updated version of this, so if you are missing anything, then you can go in, reference this BII section. You can go to your supply, or you can come to me for class nine and say, Hey, look, I don't have this in my truck and I need it to be FMC. Okay, we'll make it happen. All right. Now, if you sign for some of your BII and you lose it, that's a different story. But this is where you can find your BII, your basic issue items uh, list. It can be found in your TM. Uh, let's say you want to go and troubleshoot an issue. Well, they also have something for that, too. They have the uh, troubleshooting area of this technical manual to where the operators can go out and troubleshoot problems themselves. So if you think you got it, you can say, hey, look, you know, I can check to see why the engine's not cranking, why it's cranking slowly, why it doesn't start, and it'll give you step-by-step-by-step -by -step -by -step instructions. And remember before I said in the PDF, there's little red boxes on the inside of those PDFs that you can just click on, and it'll bring you right to the page. Now, for, for a lot of the... For a lot of the new generation, this is going to work very well for you because you're going to say, you know, I don't want to shuffle through about a thousand pages to try to figure out the answer. I want to click on it and go right there. Well, there you go. You get right on that little red box on the PDF. It'll take you right to where you need to be. All right. So enough about troubleshooting. Let's go into the actual PMCS uh, before section. All right. So in the PMCS, uh, when you're doing it, there's going to be a before, during, after, weekly, monthly, okay? What we're going to do is go over these by the number here. So we got item number. Now, item number is very important. So what you're going to do is you're going to see that there's this item number, and the item number corresponds to whatever the item to be checked is. So if there is a fault 
on your vehicle, you can take that item number and put it on the 5988 Echo for a quick reference. So if a mechanic needs to verify a fault, they can look up that item number and say, oh, okay, this is the problem with this truck. And go right to it. So here's your before, during, and after, just like we were talking about. Now I'm going to go ahead and read this out. Uh, before checks before checks and services of preventive maintenance must be performed prior to placing vehicle or its components in operation. During checks and services of preventive maintenance must be performed while vehicle and or its components systems are in operation. After checks and services of preventive maintenance are performed upon completion of mission. All right, so before, let's go ahead and talk about that a little bit. Before, when you, or before you actually start that engine, you have to go and check all of the stuff that's going on with that truck, okay? You want to check the oil before it started. You want to check um, the outside exterior before it started. You want to check as much as you can, whatever the TM says before it started. During, that would be something like the uh, transmission where it needs to heat up. The fluid needs to heat up before you can get an accurate reading on the transmission. That would be one that would be for during. After, that's for something like if you go out and you're, and you're you know, beating the vehicle up, you need to make sure that nothing's going on crazy with that vehicle so you can check it before you're out on the road next time or what you can do is check it to see what's broken you can tell your motor sergeant your motor sergeant can go in and put a requisition in or i'm sorry work order in get it fixed so you can go out and be mission capable again the next time you go out and uh have fun or do your mission all right um now after, before, or I'm sorry, before, during, and after, once you're completed with those, there's also ones that are monthly and weekly, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and go over these really quick. Looks backwards on the slide, but I'll just go ahead and read it top to bottom. Weekly, checks and services of preventive maintenance are performed once every seven days. For a lot of the active duty guys, you know this you, This would be Motor Stable Mondays. You'd go out there, you would check your weekly, do your weekly PMCS to make sure everything is good with your truck. Now, this is where it gets kind of confusing with uh, a lot of the reservists where they say monthly. Well, all I got to do is the monthly check, sorry. No, you don't. You got to do before, during, and after because these vehicles, sometimes they're not exercised like they're supposed to. So you got to do the before, during, after, and you can include the monthly if you want to. All right. Now, getting further into the TM, we're going to go into the procedure. Okay. So the procedure is what you can do for the vehicle or you can get notes on what needs to be done with the vehicle. You can get cautions, you can get notes, and these are very important to read to make sure that you don't hurt yourself, hurt somebody else, or hurt the vehicle, because safety is very important for you and, and for the equipment, okay? After the procedure, you're going to be able to see if the equipment is ready or not ready, depending on what you have found, okay? So it's, let's say, on the before, you get banged up on the left front, all right? so. Is there any leaks? Oh man, there's probably a leak. Well, if there's a leak, then we're not gonna be able to mess around with that truck. You're gonna to have to go ahead and tell the mechanic or annotate it on the 5988 Echo, and then we'll go ahead and fix everything accordingly. All right, so the learning objective, bravo. The task, we're gonna complete a DA form 5988 Echo. Conditions in a classroom shop environment given a DA form 5988 echo uh, we're going to have you the so the service member uh, you're going to be required to pass on a hands-on test with own assigned 5988 echo and with the vehicle that you are going to be PMCSing. now the 5988 echoes in the past they looked a little bit different than these this is the GCSS army version of the 5988 echo you can notice up on the left hand side up here, there's the admin number. That's going to be the admin of your truck. The model, 1151A1, that's going to be the, the nomenclature of the vehicle. And you're going to have your miles, how many miles are actually been on that truck. Okay, the pub numbers that can be used on this truck. Okay, and you can see dash 10 right here. This is the full TM number. But when we reference these TMs, we just reference this last portion right here, dash 10. Okay. Moving forward, we go down to signature, date, and time. Now, the signature block is going to be uh, primarily for the 
service member who is going to be utilizing this form and putting all of this information on the bottom. Okay, you're also going to see service data, uh, what needs to be done with the vehicle, if there's any faults or anything that's been repaired. So you know you can keep your motor saw in a check. Say, hey, motor saw, and I see that you've been putting parts on my truck. Thank you very much. Okay. And then you can annotate all of this stuff down here. But we're going to go over it a little bit more in this slide coming up. Okay. Now this is going to be the GCSS Army breakdown of the 5988 Echo. Okay. I'm not going to get too in-depth with this. Um, you can go ahead and pause it and go ahead and read over it. And you maybe ask questions uh, to the other NCOs in the room to you know figure it out. But... Basically, you want to make sure that you understand what's going on with this data on your 5988 Echo, the stuff that we just went over, and make sure that you PMCS correctly. But if you need a legend, we have this one here for you. So moving on. All right. More good GCSS Army information in regards to the layout of your 5988 Echo. And then we have this one. I included this one on here because there's a lot of folks that think, oh, you know, it's not, we're not going to see all the parts or all the work done to the vehicle. But GCSS Army makes sure that it puts all of this information in here. So you can see pretty much whatever's going on with your vehicle over the course of, you know, however long the motor sergeant uh, has possession of it, the roles for GCSS Army and can put all of this stuff in on your 5988. It's a little bit hard to read, but I'm sure you get the picture, okay? Now, on the next slide here, it shows the historical, far, uh, uh, historical faults and parts requested. Now, this is kind of like a legend or a key that will help, help you figure out how to navigate uh, some of the GCSS Army codes that could be on the 5988 Echo. And it's so long that I couldn't fit the whole thing on here. So if you wanted to go back and get uh, notes or handouts for this, then we can go ahead and get that at a later time. But currently, I just I don't have it for you, okay? Because there's too much to be made. There's too many people to hand it out to. All right. So moving on to the uh, maintenance faults section. Now this part's really important because there's a lot of people that tend to to uh, mess this stuff up. Okay. Now the item number we went over briefly. That's where you want to go ahead and put the item number. Uh, on this form. So in the TM, like we said before, it'll have an item number and then you'll have the actual technical status of that. Okay. And the technical status is listed below under TS or technical status. You have an X that's a deadline, a circle X, which means the commander has authorized you to take that vehicle and drive that vehicle. Uh, an example of that would be, hey, you know, a headlight's out. Well, sorry, I can't drive at its deadline because it's got a headlight out. Commander says, no, we're going to continue this mission. Circle X, he's going to sign it off. And then you're going to go ahead and move out accordingly until you can fix that light. You got an E, which is an admin deadline, which is a fault identified resulting in an administrative or safety deadline. Like, you know, seat belts, brakes, stuff like that. Some of the safety of use message stuff that we have to go through. Uh, an, an admin deadline would also have been the tires, the uh, big tires, the MTR tires that we recently had to switch. Now you got diagonal, which is a shortcoming identified that cannot be repaired on the spot, or a dash, which is a routine inspection service or modification work order. Now, after you've gone and figured out what your technical status is, it's very important that you put the fault description in there. Okay. Now on the item number, it might tell you exactly what the fault description is, and you just annotate it across accordingly. But if it's really specific, then make sure you put it in there because it's going to help all the maintenance personnel identify whatever that fault is so they can fix it quickly and get it back to you. Okay. Now, in the in the event that you have a fault description of, you know, low oil or low fluids or something like that, the corrective action can be filled in by the operator and as long as they go ahead and fill the truck up. So it's like say the oil is low, the washer fluid is low, we have low fluids. You go and you fill it up. You say, what was the correct corrective action? Oh, I filled it back up. And after you fill it back up, then you can initial it. And this is just for accountability and to make sure that everybody was accountable for what they had done and they signed off on it saying, you know what? Yes, I did this. Okay. Now, 
since we just talked about fluid leakage, you know, this is also a very important one, okay? Fluid leakage. People get class 1, class 2, and class 3 leaks all messed up. It happens all the time. And so what we're going to do is go by the numbers really quick just to just to knock this thing out, okay? So class 1. What is a class 1? It is leakage indicated by wetness or discoloration, but not great enough to form drops. It's class 2. A leakage great enough to form drops, but not enough to cause drops to drip from an item being checked or inspected. Class 3. You got leakage great enough to form drops that fall from item being checked or inspected. Now, this could mean there's a giant puddle on the ground and there was a massive leak and now you don't have any fluids left. In the event that you see a massive puddle on the ground, you're going to have to check your fluid levels to see if it in, in fact was your vehicle. Okay, If you have no oil in your truck and there's a giant blast marker of oil on the ground, there's a good chance you had a class 3 leak. Now to go over this with the pictures, okay, class 1. This is typically what you would see with a class 1. You have wetness around gaskets or seals and it's going to look wet but you don't really see any drops forming, okay. Class 2, now I'm pretty sure everybody has seen a class 2 on these Humvees because the hydraulic lines or the transmission lines in the back, they tend to do this all the time. And this is this is your class two, your your common class two identifier. This one's an oil, uh, oil leak. If you had a class two transmission leak, then the it would be kind of like a cherry red color. You have your class three leak, like we briefly talked about, where there's just a giant puddle on the ground. You're gonna have to check your oil, or it's actively leaking like crazy, and you just can't really stop it. You just gotta wait till it does its thing, and then you have to repair it accordingly. All right. All right. So that pretty much covers uh, all the information to this point. Why don't you guys go ahead and pause this and take a break. And then after you're done, you can come back and we'll go ahead and continue on with this slideshow. So we pull in. Right. And pull start it. You got you to yank it really hard. Sometimes it takes three or four tries. Harder. Hey, you know, hey, kind of like a grease gun, you pump and they go. Tss, tss, tss. Yeah, sometimes you might it in a feed it in there. All right, let me see if I can get it. Check on learning. Sometimes it might take a couple of tries. Excellent. Moving on. So we're going to go into Enable Learning Objective Charlie. All right. Now the task we have here, explain the responsibilities of key personnel in a unit for PMCS. The conditions in a classroom shop environment, we're going to, uh, an, uh, I'm sorry, the standard without supervision in accordance with applicable references, we're going to go ahead and identify what's going on with the um, responsibilities or, or the chain of command, if you will, for PMCS. Now, who is responsible for the PMCS? Now, as the guy is pointing at you, yes, it is the equipment operator. A long time ago, everybody was there, or the, the common knowledge was everybody is responsible for PMCS. But that's not so much the case anymore. The operator needs to be responsible for PMCSing their equipment, whether it be a generator, a trailer, a truck, uh, NVGs, any, any kind of reticle, radios, whatever it is. You need to make sure that you. PMCS your equipment to ensure that your equipment is mission capable. Here's the chain of responsibility that you would most likely see for um, maintenance uh, related issues regarding PMCS. Okay, so you have the commander at the top. The commander, uh, the maintenance program is the commander's program. Right below that is going to be the unit maintenance officer, which is generally a chief or a warrant officer. And then there's the motor sergeant. Below that, you have the platoon leader, platoon sergeant. Below that, you have the squad leader, second chief, or team chief. And then you have the operator or crew. Now, it's very important that the operator and crew does this PMCS and sends any kind of faults up to the unit uh, maintenance or motor sergeant 
along with having all of the people in between check and make sure to do a QA, QC to make sure that all the information annotated on the 5988 Echo is correct. That way, it's just going to get your stuff fixed faster, and it's going to bring all of that uh, mission-ready uh, assets back to you so you can go ahead and accomplish that mission. All right. Now, the supervisor's actions at command maintenance. Uh, it's very important that we that we have uh, people there that can check to see, or, or I'm sorry, the mechanics there to check to see if there's new parts for the vehicle, arrange for, arrange for new parts to be put on the vehicle, like if it is an operator level thing that you can do. Uh, mechanics can also help with that. So you don't have to have your operators be all by themselves trying to figure everything out. The mechanics are there to make sure that they can help you get the parts that you need, install the parts that you need, so you can go ahead and be effective. You're not always going to have a mechanic at the ready. So it's good to get hands-on on these vehicles and figure out what's going on and what you can and cannot fix. All right. For the vehicle services, uh, for the supervisor's actions, you're going to make sure that you need to, or you're going to make sure that you review the uh, DA form 5987 Echo, which is the motor equipment dispatch. I believe that's different now that GCSS Army is is in, and a lot of that stuff is done by the motor sergeant. So, if you need to have a dispatch done, and it is done through GCSS Army, it is important that you follow the rules. Um, from the master driver saying, okay, I'm dispatching you this vehicle. You are allowed to drive this vehicle. Nobody else is allowed to drive this vehicle. And then that soldier, whoever is dispatched to it, they are going to be responsible for anything broken on that vehicle. Unless, you know, it was an accident or, or you know, something happened where the, the mission required you to be a little bit tougher on the vehicle than, than normal. All right. Uh, it's also important to check the service dates. Uh, the service dates on the vehicles are important as far as, you know, oil and, and uh, electrical maintenance and stuff like that to make sure that your equipment stays mission ready. So all of that stuff on the 5988 Echo, it's important for you to look over that and make sure that you've got it figured out in case the motor sergeant's not doing their job or you see that the service dates are past due. It's very important that you make sure you keep that service date or you keep all the oils and all of the services up to date on your truck so you don't have any weird issues and you get caught on the side of the road because you ran out of oil or your oil is bad or just something something horrible happened that you could have prevented. All right, so the summary. The use of appropriate references to perform PMCS is crucial. You guys have to do it. You can't go out to the vehicle and just say, hey, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and walk around the vehicle, start it up. Everything's good because it started up. No worries, sir. That's not going to be the case. All right. You do not know what the last person did with that vehicle. So you need to have the appropriate references so you can go out and check your vehicle accordingly. Completing that DA Form 5988 Echo is also going to help you because it's going to allow for us to easily check, to find and check whatever you have found that's wrong. Once we have found this, we can go ahead and say, look, this is wrong. We're going to go ahead and create a work order for it. We're going to get it fixed. We're going to get it back to you so you can be mission ready. All right. It's also very important for you to know the un to, to understand the responsibilities of the key personnel for unit maintenance. Um, we have mechanics. You need to use your mechanics. Come up, ask questions. Uh, you can also help. You can you can be a good at hands-on. And uh, for all of the NCOs, it's very important that you have a lot of oversight over your operators to make sure they're doing the right things. You are going to be the SMEs for your uh, for your section, so you need to make sure that your guys are doing the right thing, uh, so the commander can go ahead and keep doing what he needs to do to make the mission go forward. Remember. You got to perform that before operations PMCS in accordance with your references. Before you take that truck anywhere, do the before PMCS. All right. You can even knock out that during PMCS before you actually hit the road. Okay. Hopefully this finds you all well. And now that we're done with this uh, brief presentation, we're going to go ahead and do some hands-on uh, training. We're going to have a Humvee set up, an FMT, FMTV set up, and quite possibly a trailer. So thank you for paying attention. Please pick the brains of uh, the uh, NCOs in the room 
to get a good handle on what you need to know for this uh, next hands-on portion. And uh, I guess I'll see you all in the next one.